We are getting closer to the moon, both in time and in distance. After years of waiting, NASA has rolled the SLS onto the launch pad. However, the path to a 10-day journey to the moon remains challenging, as significant work still lies ahead. Here is what NASA must accomplish before the journey can begin. So, let's find out more on today's episode of Great SpaceX. NASA delivered an exciting and consequential weekend, marking the rollout of its second lunar mission vehicle after more than three years of preparation. This moment represented far more than a simple move across Kennedy Space Center. It was a visible signal that the next chapter of human lunar exploration is nearing reality. The rollout itself was a remarkable sight. The fully assembled SLS, or Space Launch System, standing approximately 98 meters tall, was transported vertically from the Vehicle Assembly Building, or VAB, to LC-39B. This made it the tallest object ever moved since the era of the Saturn V. Although the distance between the assembly building and the launch pad is only about 6.4 kilometers, the journey took roughly 11 hours to complete. The slow pace was intentional. Safety considerations governed every aspect of the rollout, ensuring structural integrity, system stability, and environmental protection throughout the process. The measured speed also gave observers the rare opportunity to witness the rocket's movement in detail, allowing engineers, technicians, and onlookers alike to fully appreciate the scale and complexity of the vehicle. Now, the SLS and the Orion spacecraft rest at LC-39B, where they are scheduled to lift off in approximately two weeks, provided that all remaining milestones are completed successfully. This timeline represents the most optimistic scenario. The days leading up to launch will place extraordinary demands on NASA and its partners, because once the vehicle reaches the pad, it enters the most intensive testing phase of the entire mission. At the launch pad, both the rocket and its supporting ground systems must undergo a series of rigorous evaluations. Evaluations. These tests are designed to validate not only the performance of individual components, but also the way those components function together as an integrated system. The first major test in this sequence is the radio frequency interference test. Ideally, radio frequency interference testing is performed inside controlled environments such as shielded chambers or specialized vacuum facilities. However, conducting this test at the launch pad is essential because the pad provides conditions that can't be replicated inside the VAB. At the pad, the spacecraft is exposed to real-world operational factors that closely resemble those it will encounter during launch and flight. The purpose of the radio frequency interference test is to ensure that all onboard systems can operate simultaneously without disrupting one another. It also verifies that the spacecraft can withstand interference from external sources. This capability is critical for both uncrewed and crewed missions, especially in the harsh and unpredictable electromagnetic environment of space. The launch pad environment enables several key aspects of this test. The open area around the pad allows engineers to use actual antennas and to communicate with external networks such as the tracking and data relay satellite system, the deep space network, and other ground-based tracking stations. This test also includes end-to-end -end communication checks which are vital for mission control operations. Equally important is the presence of ground support equipment and umbilical connections, which can introduce interference that does not exist in laboratory settings. These real-world variables make pad-based testing indispensable. Once radio frequency testing is complete, the next major milestone is cryogenic fuel loading. During this process, liquid propellants will be loaded into the core stage and upper stage tanks. These propellants include liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, which must be stored and transferred at extremely low temperatures. Liquid oxygen is maintained at temperatures below minus 183 degrees Celsius, while liquid hydrogen must be kept below minus 253 degrees Celsius. This test evaluates the ability of the tanks, valves, and transfer lines to safely contain and manage cryogenic propellants. Of particular concern is liquid hydrogen, which is the smallest and lightest element. Its physical properties make it especially prone to leakage, even through microscopic imperfections. As a result, hydrogen systems require exceptional precision and reliability. The importance of this test is underscored by past experience. During the Artemis 1 campaign, a liquid hydrogen leak contributed to significant delays, ultimately pushing the launch to November of 2022, despite testing that began 
months earlier. With a much tighter schedule for this mission, NASA is determined to identify and resolve any similar issues as early as possible. In addition to leak detection, the cryogenic loading test allows engineers to evaluate the performance of the fueling systems themselves. This includes assessing pumping rates, flow stability, pressure control, and overall system responsiveness. These factors directly influence the timing and reliability of the launch countdown. Accurate data from this test will help refine procedures and reduce uncertainty during the final launch sequence. All of these activities share a common objective, safety. As the testing campaign progresses, the focus increasingly shifts toward operations that directly involve the crew. One of the most critical milestones in this phase is the wet dress rehearsal, scheduled for early February. During this rehearsal, the vehicle will once again be fully fueled and the mission team will practice launch day procedures in as close to real conditions as possible. The crew will don their spacesuits, enter the spacecraft, and complete all preparatory steps exactly as they would on launch day. An especially important component of the wet dress rehearsal is the emergency evacuation exercise. In this scenario, astronauts simulate a rapid exit from the spacecraft and travel to a safe location. Although such a procedure is only intended for rare and hazardous situations, it is an essential safeguard. Practicing this sequence ensures that both the crew and ground teams are fully prepared to respond decisively if conditions demand it. NASA has taken extensive measures to protect the crew from the effects of cryogenic fueling operations. According to Artemis Launch Director Charlie Blackwell Thompson, these systems have been tested independently to ensure that they are not affected by the extreme thermal environment created during tanking. She expressed confidence that the team would be fully prepared for the wet dress rehearsal. The wet dress rehearsal effectively serves as a full-scale preview of launch day. The countdown will proceed all the way to T-29 seconds, stopping just short of engine ignition. By executing nearly every step of the launch sequence, NASA can identify any procedural or technical issues that might otherwise go unnoticed until the final moments before liftoff. One notable absence from the testing campaign is a static fire test. This omission is intentional. The SLS relies on two large, solid rocket boosters that provide the majority of thrust during liftoff. Unlike liquid engines, solid rocket boosters cannot be shut down or reused once ignited. Conducting a static fire would require sacrificing and replacing these boosters, which would be impractical and unnecessary. Instead, each booster has already been tested individually prior to integration with the vehicle. This sequence of tests represents the final stretch before the crew embarks on their 10-day journey around the moon. Understanding the importance of this process requires recognizing its direct influence on the launch schedule. At present, early February represents the earliest possible launch opportunity. However, the actual launch date will only be confirmed after the completion of all testing with the wet dress rehearsal serving as the most decisive factor. If every test proceeds smoothly, the mission could launch at the earliest available window. If issues arise, delays are inevitable. In the event of significant problems, the vehicle may need to be rolled back to the VAB for repairs or adjustments. Such a rollback would add weeks to the schedule, followed by additional testing before another launch attempt could be made. To accommodate these uncertainties, NASA has established multiple launch windows spanning February, March, and April. Each each window consists of several days, providing flexibility to respond to technical findings while preserving the mission's overall objectives. After years of development and preparation, the upcoming test campaign demands unwavering focus from NASA and its contractors. Any lapse in execution could undermine the immense investment already made. That investment has not gone unnoticed. The SLS, Orion spacecraft, and supporting infrastructure have cost tens of billions of dollars. Artemis One alone required nearly a decade of preparation. Throughout this time, the program has faced intense scrutiny, particularly regarding regarding reliability and cost effectiveness. Issues such as heat shield performance have fueled criticism and skepticism. At various points, these concerns led to proposals that would have canceled or significantly altered the program during budget reviews. Although Congress ultimately preserved the program, continued support depends on demonstrable progress and success. Strong performance during testing and operations is essential to justify the program's future. Beyond domestic considerations, Artemis II also carries international significance. The mission unfolds against the backdrop of growing global competition in space exploration. China, in particular, has made substantial advances, including successful lunar landings on both the near and far sides of the moon and the return of lunar samples to Earth. 
These achievements support its ambitions for crewed lunar missions and the construction of a sustained presence on the lunar surface. While the U.S. achieved crewed landings, crewed lunar landings decades ago, those missions were brief visits. The current objective is fundamentally different. This time, the goal is to establish a lasting presence. Achieving that goal requires sustained leadership, technical excellence, and consistent progress. Although Artemis II does not include a lunar landing, it plays a vital role in validating systems and procedures for future missions. The data collected during this flight will inform subsequent crewed landings and shape the timeline for establishing lunar infrastructure. Once preparations are complete, the mission will enter its most critical phase. After liftoff from Florida, the spacecraft will ascend through Earth's atmosphere, separate from the first stage, and execute a burn to raise its orbit. Following separation from the second stage, Orion will perform a series of system checks in Earth orbit before initiating the translunar injection burn that sends it toward the moon. This outbound journey will take approximately four to five days. Upon arrival, Orion will spend about one day orbiting the moon. During this time, the crew will be closer to the lunar surface than any humans have been in more than 50 years, reaching a distance of roughly 7,400 kilometers. In addition to observing the moon, the crew will conduct experiments and system evaluations that are essential for future missions. The return journey will take advantage of lunar gravity. By carefully navigating around the far side of the moon, Orion will use a gravitational slingshot maneuver to redirect its trajectory toward Earth. This technique conserves fuel while maintaining precise control over the spacecraft's path. The trip back to Earth will take roughly four days, with course corrections performed as needed. The mission will conclude with re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, where Orion will endure extreme heat and forces before splashing down in the Pacific Ocean. This moment will mark the successful completion of the second phase of the Artemis program. We are now very close to Artemis II. It represents the first crewed lunar mission in more than half a century and a crucial step toward future landings and a permanent human presence on the Moon. NASA, the S SLS, Orion, and four astronauts stand ready. Challenges remain both before launch and during flight, but overcoming these challenges is how humanity proves its ability to explore beyond Earth. Everything is in place. The question now is simple. Are we ready to go? In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.